Hello and welcome to Monday Club. It is I, Fat Sam. I, um, we didn't record one this week. We didn't record a Monday Club this week. For whatever reason, we just kept pushing it, pushing it back, pushing it back. Then on the last day, Nick got caught on a job and yeah, it just didn't happen. So unfortunately, there is no Monday Club this week. But what I've done is I've gone through last couple of months of um, unfiltered and some outtakes that I've saved um, and I've spliced them all together. I would stop watching now because it gets a bit dicey. Um, if you're easily offended, don't watch it. If you don't uh, like grotesque stories, don't watch it. Um, but there's some there's some nice bits and pieces in there as well. Um, but other than that, if you enjoy it, thank you for watching. If you don't enjoy it, you know it is what it is. Have fun. Basically, Hypervolt make the best looking car charger on the market today. Now, I want to talk to you about why it's good for electricians to install. It's got built-in pen protection and you get your OLEV grant paid at the end of the job instead of having to wait months for some bureaucrat to shuffle around a few papers and get you paid out. Hypervolt front that cost for you. So, it is a no-brainer. Go and check them out, hypervolt.co.uk, or just Google it or search it on any search engine, and you will find Hypervolt at the top. And, you know, there is... It's one of the easiest um, car chargers to install. Go and check it out. This is a bit of the podcast where we just carry on talking about nonsense. Um, this is a bit where Kimmy thrives because that's all she does, talk about nonsense. So let me get straight to the point about all the books I've been reading in between all my electrical things. Do we, like, go on. I'm just messing. Go Thank on. God. Oh, I hate books. I hate, I hate books. Oh, I finished like two last night. I got so into it. I couldn't oh, put it Kimmy, out. Kimmy, Kimmy, you know, Kimmy, 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 Kimmy. I don't care. I hate books. It was incredible. Books. It was so like really advanced though. So I think you guys wouldn't even be able to understand. What do you mean advanced? More than half the concepts in the book. What um, was the book about? So it's, it's about the Matrix. It's like the movie Matrix, but they apply it to real life scenarios. And they Me talk some about that stuff. The holographic universe. Yeah, that kind of stuff and the artificial intelligence. This girl, this girl. Listen. This, they talk about the seven dimensions and, and then they oh. obviously refer it back to other religious texts and so forth and so forth and they overlap it and it's just... Yeah, um, it's made up by some nutter sitting in his mum's basement. Yeah, yeah, so apparently this lady, she took some drugs and then these messages came to her and she wrote them down. Definitely a credible tried. source. Definitely right. a credible source. Got out my nut and then uh, wrote a book. Yeah, and that she, sounds, she, like, a, that sounds like a meth addict. But yet, <laughs> you know what? It's funny because um, she does not disclose what drug it is. She meth. said, I do not want to mention <laughs> <laughs> Meth and ecstasy. So when she's on it, she can see the Matrix glitching on how she can manipulate it. <laughs> hey, listen. Speaking of that, have you, have you seen a um, almost hey, wait, film in the fourth Matrix? Oh, my God, the new one's it's coming done. out in December. Looks awful. Do you, watch it? Do you want to come to the cinema with me? No. No. You live too far away. Film. If you lived in Stafford, a hundred percent, Kimmy. No, actually, I wouldn't, because you know why? One, I don't like going to the cinema. First of all, if I need to go for a wee, I need to pause it. Second of all, I don't like other people there. And third of all, there's no way I'm, I'm going to try and concentrate with Kimmy sitting next to me just talking. I know. I'd be like, oh my god, this guy. <sighs> da, 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 da. So in the first movie, da, da, da. oh my god, Sam. yeah, yeah, no, I couldn't guess in the movie. And, and listen. The new Matrix, if you look at the trailer, it looks awful. It's just oh, regurgitating the first one, but like he just it. learns to be Neo quicker. Morpheus isn't the same. I know. I, yeah. I didn't like that. But Lawrence Fishburne is fat now, fatter than me. Who? Lawrence I still Fishburne, like him. First, Morph so, uh, first Morpheus. Anyway, listen, I've got something to talk about. <sighs> Why you got to say it like that? Oh, no, no, I mean, yeah, carry on. Anything. It's probably going to be something to do with... Oh, yeah, what happened to that wine you was brewing? Are you still doing that? It's not wine. Look. <laughs> Listen. What? <laughs> I've got a full-on... I've got a full-on uh, still going on over here. No, I've, I've got loads in the cupboard. I've made... 
honey bourbon. I've made uh, normal whiskey. Um, what's the other one? Apple brandy. Um, apple pie moonshine. Like I've I've okay. got two. I've got two bottles of seventy percent up there that have just come out of the still. Um, yeah. Still on it. No one cares. What's your story then? <laughs> right. This we're we're probably gonna get. Oh, you know the. <laughs> I'm worried now. What? <laughs> you know, you know the uh, the uh, unfiltered we've done. I'm not going to talk about what we said on it because we got demonetized for it. Is it with aliens? No. To do with protesters. Really? Yeah. Got well, demonetized. You talked about it, not me. No, well, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we got in trouble for that. Um, but this might be might get us in trouble but i just want to have a normal conversation about it right so bear in mind the, the latest regulations and rules in terms of discussing certain topics freedom of speech is long gone by the way hun hmm. remember it's david a... Ike deleted you don't want to be like him right you're All going right. don't drag me down with you i'm doing well <laughs> so um i've had both of my vaccines oh, i've right. had both it's my it's shots okay, then. right oh, when are you having your third I'm not. Oh. I have vaccine regret. Oh. Uh, I just, I just regret it, and I wish I never took them. And I've been offered my third, and I'm just not going to have it. I just wanted to know what other people's opinions on this. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, why are you scared? It's my own opinion to myself. I don't want to. Have you had it, Nick? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Oh. One thing I said to Sam I don't want to talk about is oh, this, okay. and then he brings it up. I don't want to talk about it either. It's cool. Kimmy, have you had yours? <laughs> I'm exempt. You know, what I mean? you know, you know I'm, I'm exempt. It is what it is, right? So when I went to the Alex show, obviously they asked for your your thing. I just said, look, I'm exempt, and I'm also exempt from being tested. I'm exempt from everything. Did you, you guys know I'm exempt from literally bus lanes? Because you're so um, smart. You less so I just showed them my exemption certificate. It's on the NHS website. If it causes you distress having something shoved to the back of your throat through your nose or whatever, however you test, right? I don't want it. It ain't fun. I'll want, give you that. I don't want to do that, and it's okay. It gives me anxiety. I'm exempt. It is what it is. I ain't had COVID. I ended up having a test once actually, and that's when I was quite sick. It was negative. So I, I had COVID had three weeks ago, it. a month ago now. So I'm not kidding. Oh, yeah, Nick's had it. I had, had it, so you're so. good now. You don't need a vaccination. You don't need a booster. I don't know. Well, it, it, it no, you've got proper. antibodies now. So yeah, I love antibodies. It sucked for a day, but then after that, I wasn't too bad, but obviously I stayed off work. Um, oh, listen, yeah. that's a lie. He was like, oh, I'm so poorly when I was phoning him. I phoned him about three not, or four I'm days in a row. Because I'm not having him put, fucking triggered across the top. <laughs> he was, he was, he was beat up. He was, on, he was like, oh, 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 if if I go, will you, uh, will you look after my wife and kids? And I was like, nah. Got me own. <laughs> yeah, that happened. <laughs> um, will you take over my business? No. No, it's Adams. I told you this. It's already written in the will. If I go, I, the whole thing's Adams. Good. Act. Adam um, it's, I'm so tired. You know what? I've always wondered this. Does Adam understand, understand and appreciate what he has with you? Or does he oh, just think... Yeah. Being- it's normal because ne- he's never really had an experience of working for someone who's shit. I think he only, I think he does appreciate it all. I, like, does I, he understand what he's no, got? Can't I, do. I, I think yes and no. Yes and no. I think yes, when people tell him, like Sam has said to him before on the phone, like, you don't realize how lucky you are, and like, a few of the lads. But he has nothing to compare it to. So I was going to say, because do you know how many times I'm so jealous of him? I'm like, oh my God, I wish I worked for The only him. thing is, He's learning off Nick. Um, so although Nick knows what he's doing in his realm. He... I don't know everything. In, I don't know commercial industrial. He can only learn off domestic. Yeah, so at me. some point, if he wants to be the f- total package, or he might not want to, but really. He wants to... a gold card. You can get a gold card without knowing too much Man, about. Stop brainwashing and... the young people. They don't need a gold card. Is that sounds brainwashing. That's done that. 
No, no, I just said it to wind Sam up. I know. Uh, listen, I... listen, listen. Look you know what I've got right here. No oh, one cares. Sh- Look what I've got right here. What's that? Oh, hang on, hang on. Gold bronzer in it. <laughs> I got for a gold card. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. You know what? I did finally finish my qualification that started a year and three months ago. That should have been one day. That domestic energy assessor thing, man, it's been awful. I've been trying to finish it for over a year and I finally managed to get it done. So I'm qualified now, ready to carry on with those assessments. Do you know what, ladies but and gentlemen? Procrastination is a real thing, kids. kids. Stay protected. Right, we were just coating someone off, was we? No, we wasn't really. Mark was talking about <laughs> um, Jordan's video again. Yeah, he's got, got some other stick on Instagram, hasn't he? He's had a bit of a rough week, I think. Um, getting called out for one of his safe isolation videos with Martin Dale. Oh, what now? What? Like, what? Yeah, my it, little the post has been taken down now. Is he? Well, Jordan's post. No, so um, I won't name him, but a guy put a post up on Instagram tagging in Martindale, um, the NIC, Napit, um, the IET, basically everybody from the industry asking if this is what safe isolation should look like. And they felt justified in it because it was advertising as they saw it. Um, yeah, I had a few discussions of a DM with the person who posted it because I didn't think that was very good form, to be honest tagging in a person sponsors and industry bodies about something that i didn't really think was anything too too bad to be right. fair Long and short it wasn't to the it wasn't to the it wasn't to the book um but it wasn't awful yeah i it get is. it when people had a good dig at him when he'd used his vault stick on a video yeah. and went uh, that's i get he deserves some ribbon for that and he took it on the chin but, Listen, I yeah. use my Volt stick all the time. I ain't got time for safe isolation all the time. Yeah, but you're not advocating, like you're not promoting yourself to, to put videos out there. This is safe working practice. This is what you should do to apprentices. You don't do that. But what me and Jordan and Chris and everyone will be trying to do in our videos is this is the way you should be doing things safely. Mm. So him using right. that in a Honestly, video, it's not if you do it, no deal. one cares because no one gives a shit. <laughs> Listen, it's not that big of a deal. As long as you're working safe with safety in mind, you're fine. Like people like yeah. this. Listen, it's that donut. Um, isolate for life. Listen, he's doing a. He's going too far with it. He's being too zealous with it. Like relax. Um, promote safety hey, in I'm the industry. About. That's great. That's great. Um. We all we all support safety in the industry, but relax with the veracity and the zealousness about it. Like people will make mistakes. It's just life. Certainly if you're putting out, I don't know, thirty hours of content a month or whatever Jordan's putting out. What's he putting out? Maybe hours all right. Let's say he puts out 10, 10 hours a month of content. I I I'll tell you what. Anyone go out there, get 10 hours of content and find me a mistake. Listen, you've got Lord of the Rings had a, had a Land Rover up on the cliff in the original edit. They, the, the, I remember seeing it. There was a Land Rover parked up on the cliff and there's all like these weird little goblin geezers running about, but there's a Land Rover up there. It got left in. Mistakes happen. Things happen. Like, we're all human. You just got to leave people, to, like, leave people alone. Mind you, saying that, when people put themselves out there as this top class, top flight, you are opening yourself up for these things, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah, I just ran there's, there's, there's ways of doing it. I think if you've seen something that you really are passionate about that you think someone's done wrong, you know you can approach them on a DM or something, couldn't you? Or maybe make a comment on the post. But to go tagging half the industry and the people who's paid for the sponsorship for that person to produce a video, I thought was a bit over the top. He's, he's deleted that post now anyway, so he's taken it down. Maybe reflected on it himself and at the end of the day jordan talking about safe isolation kits is going to get far more people interested in buying them and working safely than an entire campaign the rest of us tried to do for a month that's just the reality of it isn't it you know jordan's mentioned that and put a video up about it it's gonna it's gonna shift safe isolation equipment people are going to be thinking about it otherwise maybe weren't 
if he's not nailed it from a technical point of view absolutely perfectly, then give the guy a break. I think it's um it's not a big it's one of it's those. Not a no call. need to chase after people like that. It's not yeah. like he it's not like he just turned it on and said, <laughs> there you go, or turned it off and was like, just gonna touch a buzz bar to prove it. Like it's not a thing. Like he, I don't know what he did, but I can't imagine it is. It wasn't that bad. And at the end of the day, that he's a he's a content creator who's making this stuff. And there needs to be a bit of understanding for him as well, I think, in that. There's too often people call content creators out in quite a nasty way. Um, and it's unnecessary. There's still people behind all of this stuff. There's there's ways and means of doing it. You don't know quite how you might be affecting somebody else. You know, Jordan's a robust character, so I'm sure he's totally fine. But we don't all know that. You know, that yeah. can be the kind of thing that can tip Listen, somebody over the edge if you lost if he lost that sponsor as a result of that person doing that, you know, who knows how that can leave someone feeling. We all need to be a little bit more mindful, I think, in how we approach each other on social Absolutely. media. You wouldn't do it down the pub, would you? Like if Sam had written an article in the paper, come barging in and say, listen, everybody, this dickhead over here, he said this, he's done that. I want his missus on the phone now. I want his employer's address. I'm writing him a letter. I'm going to tell everybody. You just wouldn't do it, would you? So why do we do that on social media? I don't know. I think it's like a bit of a win for them people, isn't it? It's like, oh, yeah, I've got him. I've done him. Like, I've caught him out. Right, now I'm going to town. It's, it's, a, it's a strange thing. But, and we cover this quite a lot. I'm just going to say this right now. Jordan is my favourite electrical YouTuber. And he can't do no wrong in my eyes. <laughs> He's saying mine too. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, um, listen. He doesn't, Sam doesn't watch anyone, so it's... Nah, he doesn't. <laughs> we'll tell him about a video we did the other day. He goes, no, I've watched podcast. It. Nah, Nick's like, I've done a really good video today. Have you checked it out? Nah. No, I never listen. Say that. You do all the time. I like. want Sam to watch one. I send to him a WhatsApp, and then he'll watch it if it's for a reason. The reality That's is, it. though, the reality is. How much of the electrical care. content do you watch? Not a lot. Exactly. I don't have time. Exactly. When do I get... Listen, if I'm watching something, it's something I want to watch, like, I don't know, about remote control cars or whatever. I ain't trying to watch something about work. I'm switching off. Do you watch occasionally? Watch a bit of watch some core, watch some marks one. I watched that um one when you went with Mikey and uh Ryan and everyone down at the college. Um I think as and when I can and it pops up, and I said this to Mikey, I was on the phone to him the other day, as and when stuff pops up and I'm on my phone and it goes, Oh, someone's uploaded a video, I'll watch it. But most of the time I just don't get a chance. I don't even get a chance to watch the like the YouTubers that aren't electrical related, because mm. if I'm not sat in front of the screen doing paperwork or editing stuff, I'm playing with the kids. And if I'm not doing that, I'm asleep. Yeah, so. I stick them on in the background at the office and listen if something interesting's happening, like Sam electrocuting himself to death working mm. live. I might focus on the <laughs> screen for five minutes. What you call? Tongue to the roof of his mouth. Whatever. <laughs> I've got a new, I've got a new I've got a new new toy. Can quickly show this. Are we allowed to show products on your podcast still? One of your old sponsors. Go on. Oh, it's TIS, isn't it? It is. It's this. Oh, it's a new clamp meter. Now, it's that AC, AC listen, DC clamp meter. Relax a second. Now, I love TIS. They're my favourite tester brand. But you have been banging on about this. Maybe I'm going to cut this section into, into the thing. Listen, you've been banging on about this TIS tester for a while. It, apparently, it's mm. a game changer. Would you like to explain why it's a game changer? because it does AC and DC in one product. So that, that railway job I've been on this week where it's off-grid, it will tell me the leakage current and the current flowing in both an AC system and a DC system. I don't think any other manufacturer has a product out at the minute that does that. Nick, so when you're trying to worry to... about that because Nick don't do no DC. No, he might be doing in, in the future. This is what they're aiming it at. So it's with solar and electric vehicle charge points in mind and battery storage. It's going to become more of a factor. And you can look at your RCDs getting blinded as well for DC current that's circulating within a domestic property. This will see it and show you exactly what is flowing. Um, in you, what what circuit yeah. it's from as well, really. Yeah. So you can well, actually figure out what's oh, going on. It shows you. Teaching sound time. Now, 
usually you would put that round a circuit, round a cable, and it would tell you what's happening with the cable, correct? Yeah. And that's on AC? Yes. So say, because there was all this hoopla about um, DC backfeed a while ago, because so much stuff is on DC now. Yeah. Now, if I clamp that round an AC thing and switch it to DC, yep. will it tell me if there's DC in it? It does. So it will show that's, you that's AC and DC current flow. So yeah, you've got so like I mean, some, the... some strange tripping or something, and you put it around and you see, like, I don't know, whatever's happening in it is DC problems. You'd be like, oh, well, sweet, we'll sort that out then. Yeah, I mean, in an older install, you can see it, can't you? There's an AC type RCD in there. You're pressing the test button and it's maybe worked. You're putting it on your MFT and it won't trip. This could show you why, because you could see that you've got some DC current blind in it. It's decent. I'm quite impressed with it. So How much was it? Straight in my test bag. It's not cheap, to say the least. It was a couple of hundred quid, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah, so you only have to use it a couple of times. It gets you out of a few tricky jobs and it's paid for itself. Yeah, and it's a traditional sort of multimeter as well. You can still do your, your resistance and voltage measurement, measurements as well. So, you know, it's, it, it has a place, I think, as we're moving more towards different types of RCDs in domestic houses, certainly with battery storage and solar generation as well. I think a lot of us are going to need gear like this. And if you can get it in one product, like you just want a, a clamp meter, they're not cheap on their own, are they? You're looking no. at getting on for a I bought the Mega 305E or whatever it was a few years ago. Yeah. And that was 190 quid. Smart. Exactly. So oh, if so you need a DC the... one as well. So they're in the, the same sort of price range as a normal clamp meter, but they're not, yeah. but they also add the DC element to it as well. Yeah. So I think if you look at it for value, you're getting that again with TES, TIS. I say that all the time that value for money i think they're really hard to beat with their product range i don't i don't see anyone else really competing with them and i say that as someone who's you know they're not sponsoring me i do pay for all this stuff I, and i genuinely enjoy using it you um, are a big fan yeah. of tis as am i i am i like that i like the people at tis as well they're decent people steve's a nice guy yeah so uh, it's um we're installing some ev charge points for him so i'm saying we're not sponsored but we're actually getting paid <laughs> by him to do some graph <laughs> Fair enough. Nice. As long as there's tea and biscuits, you'll be fine. Exactly. Right. Well, well, listen. Um, very interesting, unfiltered. It's only a quick one, just because we was having so much fun talking. He was unfiltered. <laughs> Wait, I need to go for a wee quickly. So we're back for unfiltered. The podcast turned into an actual loony asylum, basically, of Nick talking about Chunder Dragons and all kinds of nonsense. And before we did... Eating food out of the bin. Eating food out of the bin. I don't know. And before I got asked for my poo story, I thought we'd better get onto Unfiltered. Yeah, go on. Oh, we'll wait for summer. She needs to hear this. But, um, oh yeah, have you, do, you, what, do you listen to the news at all, like, in your van and that, about these yeah. MPs and that? No. Ever since I deleted Facebook, that was, as awful as it sounds, my source of news. <sighs> I listen to the radio occasionally at work, but most of the time, me and Adam at work, when there's two of you, it's very difficult. I've got really bad hearing in one ear anyway. And he's always bloody drilling the wall or multi tooling constantly. So if we've got the radio on, it it's either that quiet or I just turn it off. Or if I'm by myself, I just listen to podcasts. So I don't really listen to the news. Yeah, no, I, it's I only don't... when something happens and both of goes, shit, he's heard about this. Listen, all I'm going to do is tell the story of the poo story and that's it today but that's unfiltered okay yeah and right you ready so i might attack the poo right. Story then. right so last so this is sam's poo story again so last what episode, number are we on six. now six six so <laughs> the other week i was staying here and it was like a thursday thursday night and i was like I don't know what I ate, but I ate something out and I was come back and I was like, all pleased with myself. I'd been to the gym and stuff like that. And then woke up in the morning, double early, because I had to pack everything up and all that because I go home on a Friday. And I'm sort of mooching around and sort of doing stuff. And I'm like, ooh, bit of a bit of a belly. So I go and have a poo, get it all out. I'm all pleased with myself. I'm like, yeah, that's all good. Feel two pound lighter, no problem. And then I'm in the bedroom now. I was getting dressed on the bed. I'm sitting there. I'm just in my pants. And the bed's white sheets completely. Hang like... on. 
Hang on, pants. Pants or boxer shorts? Boxers, but pants, man. That's what I call well, it. I can actually see you wearing a Y-front. 100% I can see that right now. A little <laughs> skiddy in the back. Like, they're all stained with a bit of skiddy. Oh, no. I've got Larry ones. Like, my my wife and child. Bought We've embarrassed him now. No, not We've really. They've got, like... Because we, he knows he wears them. He's just trying to admit to... But we're going to get a pair right now. Don't, make, don't... Listen, don't... Wear I don't want to see your skiddies, thank nonsense. you. No, thank you. No skiddies for us. Um, anyways, I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, I, can't, I need a fart. So I farted. I was like, wait. Is it a gamble? I was like, that ain't a fart. Oh, a bit of luck I got. Like, a bit of luck I put my pants on to sit down. Anyway, so I stand oh, up. On your I white turn around, And the poo juice had gone through the pants. <sighs> and it had gone onto the bed. And now I've got oh. this, this skid mark on the bed. And I'm like... Oh, oh, poo fuck. juice. Had the poo juice gone through my pants like that. And it was like proper I've as well. <laughs> you should oh, honestly. So he really got poo juice on his sofa last time, <laughs> next to his wife. So I was like, how do I deal with this situation? This is a problem now. So uh it's the first thing in the morning. And I'm like, what am I gonna do? So I went and got a baby wipe. And I'm trying to wipe it with a baby wipe. I'm thinking, yes. So you're just do. rubbing it in right now. And it just got worse. And I'm like, now nah, it's <sighs> a big poop stain on there. Poop stain. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a poop stain of poo juice. I'm like, what am I going to do with that now? So uh, I take, I take it, I take off the sheet now, and I'm. Really, so I thought, if I put it the other way, so you know, if you put the tap on, I put the tap on fast. And then I'll put it on the back side of it so it blasts the poo juice particles out of it. So I might be able to dim it down a bit. Didn't work. No. Now you just have a wet poo juice corner on the bed. No, I just ruffled it all up and then threw it on the floor and went. Normally, they'd just pick it up and put it straight in the wash. You should have been all right. That's what I'm saying. I sort of tried to hide it by... I sort of folded it in on itself about four or five times. Folded it down... I could see them picking it up and you just took a standing knife and cut the square out where your poo juice was. And they've <laughs> gone, I, can't oh, just leave a, I can't just leave a poop stain there. For them no, to you can't. Them. Not if you've got oh, to right. return to the same place. And they yeah, know and I was back there Monday as well. She's like, hiya, Sam, how you doing? And I'm like, yeah, all right. Get that poo stain out. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's so grim. But, well, I don't know what to do about this situation. Like, I'm definitely going to have problems tomorrow. Listen. I'm definitely going to have problems tomorrow. Do you reckon you're, like, allergic to something that's giving you a bad belly, which makes it just easy for you to shit yourself? Yes, I think so. I think, as I've got older, I have developed allergies. I mean, you might be a celiac. No, I ain't that. But... I want to get one of them allergy tests. Have you seen them? I'm, I want to get an allergy test because pizza makes me ill like 10 minutes after I've eaten it. Yeah. And like some foods make me feel really rough and like lethargic and like dead almost. Um, Sounds like a celiac. This ain't no celiac. Like, some of that's like proper life threatening, isn't it? Celiac stuff. Because yeah. when I used to no, work in the cafe, you used, to start, you used to have to be so careful with it. No, that's dumb. <laughs> Mine's, um, I have a reaction. I don't know what it is. It's not latex. Well, I'm not sure. My, um, I've had it since I was like six. You won't be able to see on camera here, but my, um, my fingertips and my hands, they put my skin will peels off my fingers, like in massive blotches to the point where I've got to wear a plaster or something on my fingers because the skin is so thin and sore. I've had it since I was little. And then every year, like twice a year, It'll happen and I could have like patches like that big peeling off palm my hands. My fingertips can literally peel off in one go. It's all awful. I've had, had cream for years. Um, it just never seemed to really do anything. It's just man up and get on with it now. Like, there's not Oh, you're odd. Does it help if you wear like gloves for work? Makes it worse. Anything? Makes it worse. Only, only say that because I'm one of these people that always has sweaty armpits or sweaty feet or sweaty hands like religiously. Oh, ever since like sort of hit puberty, I've always just been sweaty, cl- clammy, just a clammy person. And if I put gloves on, like any sort of form of gloves, within two minutes I could pull it off, and you could literally just like drip the glove out. It's awful. But like that would, I'm one of these people. You get into a bath and you sit in the bath ten minutes. You know, you prune up a bit. 
I mm. I literally turn inside out. Like my skin is just awful. You could literally, if I get my skin wet too wet, you could literally peel chunks of my skin off if I sit in a bath too long. It's awful. So just What's don't a bath? Bath. bath. What's a bath? You know bath. what I learned the other day? I can't bath. remember this for me. Did what? You know when your fingers go all like crinkly and all wrinkly in the bath? Raisins. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know why that is? I know why it is. Does Sam know why it is? No. Go on, Sam. So, apparently it's not proven, but scientists think it's to do with having more grip under the water. Yeah. And that's why your hands go all wrinkly. But it's not proven. Gripping on what? Anything. If you need to grip something. In case you become a mermaid and you need to get wrinkly hands, you need to go grip shit underneath water. There's no such thing as mermaids, first of all. You don't know. Have you ever seen one? Oh, mate. I'm not not playing this game. I hate this sort of... This sort of stuff. Oh, just because you haven't seen it, pff, can't prove it's not there, can you? Yeah, I can. You can't. There's no, there's no records of mermaids ever. No fossil records. No, no records. I've, I've, I've seen a film about mermaids, but there's no record. There's no scientific evidence of mermaids. There was mermaids in this film that I saw. Yeah, it's called Hollywood. Peter Pan. No, it's it's, uh, I had a little red crab as well. as well. It was Jamaican. Why? Right, I'm done. Okay. Going to record again. Okay, you ready? So, <laughs> <laughs> my mate was a firefighter and um, there's a caravan site close and uh, he had a call out to a lady, not very well, really old lady. And every time I tell this story, I'll heave. I'm going not to on this one. He walked in, see if she was all right, and he kicked a bucket next to the bed. I've heard this story. But, but the bucket didn't move. And he was like, oh, oh God, I'm going already. Um, <laughs> he said, uh, oh, What's in the bucket? I said, <coughs> <laughs> and it was full. <laughs> it was to the limit, literally full. <laughs> and it was. You weren't even there. You can't even it was thick. And it, <coughs> <laughs> and it was her spit bucket, and it was full to the <laughs> brim of spit. Oh. <laughs> You can see why it gets me every time I tell the story. It really and does. He nearly kicked why. it over, but he says it's when you kick it. You know when you kick a bucket of water and it just sort of wobbles? This was solid. It was, like, thick. Mm. Oh. oh, that's disgusting. I thought you were going to say shit or something. Not no. Spit. spit bucket full. But why is spit <laughs> such a thing? <laughs> I think spit's done me worse than poo. Yeah. I mean- Mate. If I had just exploded, there'd have been bits of me all over the wall. I wouldn't, if I'd have seen that, that would have just killed me. Oh. Why is there a thumbs up on my thing? I don't know. Why is there a thumbs up on your that screen? literally just come up out of nowhere. It's the gremlins. I told you, gremlins tonight. How do I get a thumbs up? You don't. Why haven't I got it now? It's gone. I've got it. You've got it. Yeah, if you click what? on your reactions, bottom right of Zoom. I didn't click on anything. Oh, look at love art now. you clicking on buttons. Only on my screen. Only works for me. <laughs> Listen, idiots. Bye. I have really enjoyed tonight, but I'm going. Why have I just switched places with you? Because <laughs> you're fucking about with shit. I'm out. I'm so I've lowered hand. I've moved back.